What's up guys and welcome back to SP Vids. In this video we are on the 404SX but don't let this fool you for this video. This is going to apply to a lot of different types of beat making, no matter what hardware or software you're using. It could also apply to other genres of music as well, especially loop based music. So what I want to share with you is a tip regarding beat making structure or song making structure and it's something that I've applied to my beats recently and it's made them way more interesting to listen to in my opinion. And I think I've just come to the conclusion or found this tip purely by just listening to so much lo-fi hip-hop and trying to think of things to make my beats more interesting. So I hope this tip helps you guys. I'm going to take you through it now. And basically the first thing to note about this is if you're chopping samples, which is basically what this tip is around, then always do more than you think you need. And that's just because it gives you so much more options. You can a, you can try different loops. Um, if you've got more chops, you can experiment with different loops. And for this particular tip that I'm going to share with you, it's just more useful to have as many chops as you can so you can do lots of experimentation. So basically, the idea behind it is to have a part A and a part B in a beat that you've got. And when you jump between these two parts, it just kind of creates a bit of tension in the beat because the listener wants to hear the, the, the start of the beat again the starting riff of the beat and what it does as well if you present part A to the listener first go to part B and then come back to part A you've kind of created a sort of familiarity in the beat and when it drops back to that A part that will have some sort of effect on the listener because they already know that part and there's that familiarity and I just think it's a cool technique and it makes you instantly understand the beat and enjoy it a little bit more I think. So I've got some chops here and they're from a jazzy song as usual. I will drop this for the members in the community tab so if you're a member check out the community tab after this uh, video has gone live. So they're the four chops that are going to feature in this example but these are the entire chops that I took. So I took this one I took this so it's all about just trying to find those different notes in the song so that you can kind of play them as an instrument these two are obviously pretty similar in sound if you listen to two and three then that's very similar to being the, the same notes so it would be difficult to get both those chops in so I've ended up, like I say, I've ended up using one, two, five, and six. And back in the day, this is probably what a beat would sound like that I'd make. It's kind of a lazy approach to beat making, but it would just be this for the entire song. Okay, so I'd probably just loop that over and over again, do some drum variations and maybe throw in a few foley's, a few rapper noises, that kind of thing. But that's not enough in my opinion anymore and this second part now which I'll show you really does add a different element to the beat. So it is quite long and I'll have to show you via finger drumming it but I'll do part A, I'll do part B and then I'll go back to part A and hopefully you can understand what I mean. So here we go. And here comes part B. And now let's go back to part A again. Okay, so that's the example and 
the word I was looking for before actually when I was trying to describe this is when you go back to part A it's kind of like a resolution in the song it it resolves itself there's the tension in part B and then it resolves itself by going back to part A and that has like a really positive effect to, uh, to a listener I feel especially for me like listening to the tracks when they do go back to that part A there's a real sense of a resolution and it just makes the beat feel way way more enjoyable so that's it for this tip guys that's all i wanted to show you that bouncing between part a and part b it really does have this nice effect in your beats and like i say it makes them way way more interesting to listen to so if it's something you've not tried before definitely give that a go and obviously there's no rules to beat making so either take this with a pinch of salt or fully adapt it to your beat making you don't have to do this you can come up with your own methods for making your beats more interesting but i do think that that is kind of a standard thing in music where you're presented with a part it goes to a different part and there's tension in the beat or the song and then when it flips back to a that tension is resolved it's released and it's a good effect on the listener so i hope that's a good tip for you guys i hope you like the sounds the drum sounds are from my lo-fi drum pack volume 3 forgot to mention that head over to spvids.com uh, there's a discount code in the description below as well if you want a little bit of discount it's 10% off so look at the description below and you'll get that thanks to all my members again like I said before in a video don't forget to check the community tab for the sample I'll share that with you guys so you can use that and if you're interested in becoming a member look at the link in the description below as well thanks a lot for watching guys keep making beats and I will be back very soon Peace!